Today we'll be discussing about the diseases of the myocardium. So before moving to the disease proper, we need to know what is myocardium. So myocardium is the muscle layer of the heart. So uh, enormous layer of the heart is known as endocardium and the middle layer is myocardium and the outer layer is the pericardium. So in this um, lecture, we'll be talking about the diseases of the myocardium. And in this first lecture, we'll discuss about the myocarditis. Uh, this is the ultra-structural picture of the myocardium. You can see the intercalated uh, cardiac myocytes as well as you can see the uh, arrangement of the actin myosin uh, in the cardiac muscles as well as the mechanism of the uh, contraction of the cardiac muscle. Uh, this anatomy is more important uh, for the cardiomyopathy. However, you need to know uh, the physiology of the myocardium before understanding the viral myocarditis or the uh, cardiac or the myocarditis. So now moving to the myocarditis uh, proper. So myocarditis is the inflammation of the myocardium. So if, if there is any inflammation in the uh, myocardium, we call it the myocarditis. If it is acute inflammation, we call, the, we call it acute myocarditis. If it is chronic, then we call it the chronic myocarditis. Basically, myocardi myocarditis is caused by the uh, infections or it can also occur due to the presence of the various toxins like uh, alcohol and it in some cases it can be autoimmune. So among the uh, infectious causes, viral infections like Coxsackie virus, adenovirus, influenza virus, HIV virus, hepatitis C, these are the virus which are responsible for the myocarditis. Similarly, bacteria like uh, uh, Borrelia, Bogdoferi, Mycoplasma, diphtheria, tuberculosis, as well as the streptococcus can cause the myocarditis. Similarly, there are some uh, protozoal causes like trypanosoma, cruzi, toxoplasma, and the African trypanosomiasis also can cause the cardiomyopathy. Similarly, fungal infections like aspergillosis, blastomycosis, and candidiasis are responsible for myocarditis in some cases. Similarly, we should also consider the uh, parasitic, uh, some parasitic infestation is a cause of uh, the myocarditis in specific cases. As well as we have to consider uh, scrub typhus, Q fever, or the Rocky Mountain spotted fever, which are the rickettsial uh, diseases, as the cause of the myocarditis. However, viral myocarditis is one of the most common causes of myocarditis. Among the autoimmune diseases, uh, SLE, systemic sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoidosis, and the hypersensitivity reaction to the various drugs like penicillin, sulfonamide lead carbon monoxide can cause myocarditis. There are some other non-infective causes like uh, giant cell myocarditis and eosinophilic myocarditis also. Uh, you can see in this picture the presence of the uh, non-caseating granuloma in the myocardium, which is suggestive of the sarcoidosis uh, leading to the myocarditis. So among the drugs and toxins, alcohol is the most common cause of uh, myocarditis. Similarly, other drugs like anthracyclines, including doxorubicin, and also the drugs like clozapine, cocaine, amphetamine, and the lithium, they are also responsible for the inflammation of the myocardium. You need to know a few of these agents uh, because they are frequently asked in the examination. So we need to understand the, the pathophysiology of the myocarditis. Most of the time, it can be either due to the direct infection of the myocardium or the effect of the uh, circulating toxins. And in case of the viral myocarditis, uh, it occurs after the initial viral symptoms. It is the most common cause of myocarditis and the susceptibility for the myocarditis following the viral infection increases if we use glucocorticoids, immunosuppressants, or if, uh, or if we use any kind of the uh, radiation therapy, then these uh, these uh, things can increase the chances of myocarditis following the viral infection. You should also know that if the myocarditis is due to the Lyme disease, it is associated with the AV block. This is frequently asked as MCQs in the exam. Similarly, the toxins or drugs, they can also directly injure the myocardium or they can cause the hypersensitivity reactions and these hypersensitivity reactions may be associated with the myocarditis. So you should know the various causes the myocarditis and the how they can cause the inflammation of the myocardium. 
Uh, this picture shows the pathogenesis and progression of the viral myocarditis. We will be focusing on the viral myocarditis because it is the most common cause. So when a virus enters into the myocytes, there, there will be the replication and the protein expression. When the, there is viral replication and the protein expression, uh, body will start to um, act against them. So there will be the release of the cytokines as well as the activation of the lymphocyte and the formation of the antibodies against the pathogen. These immune response will try to suppress the suppress or cure the viral infection. However, if immune uh, system or the immunity of a body is unable to su uh, suppress the infection, then there can be the persistent or the latent viral infection in the myocardium. And this persistent in the latent infection later on can cause chronic and dilated cardiomyopathy because of the antibodies formation against the pathogen surface antigen and the myocyte proteins leading to the uh, chronic inflammation and that results in the formation of the dilated chambers of the heart leading to dilated cardiomyopathy. So you should understand how a viral pathogen can cause the myocarditis and which can later progress to the dilated cardiomyopathy. So the patient can present in one of the four ways. Many patients may present with a fulminant myocarditis, which is characterized by initial viral prodrome or the influenza-like illness. And, and then suddenly patient develop the heart failure and they can land up uh, to your hospital in the cardiogenic shock. So that is the presentation of the fulminant myocarditis. Similarly, some patients will present with the uh, longer period of the symptoms with of the heart failure and this acute myocarditis can lead to the dilated cardiomyopathy as shown in the uh, as shown in this picture. In this picture you can see that the cardiac chamber basically left ventricle has enlarged as well as there is some enlargement of the right ventricle. And the next uh, way of presentation is chronic active myocarditis. This is a rare presentation and it is usually associated with the chronic myocardial inflammation. And in long term, patient can present with the dilated cardiomyopathies or they can present with the arrhythmias. And there is a next presentation, which is the chronic persistent myocarditis, which is characterized by the focal myocardial infiltrates uh, if you perform the endomyocardial biopsy. And these this persistent myocarditis can cause chest pain and the patient can present with the arrhythmias without necessarily causing the ventricular dysfunction like in the other presentations. So these are the four ways how a patient with a myocarditis can present to your clinic or hospital. So the many clinical symptoms are non-specific. Patient may present with the chest pain and the breathlessness. However, these symptoms are non-specific and they won't help us to differentiate the uh, myocarditis from other cardiac diseases. Similarly, some patients may present with the uh, atrial fibrillations and other arrhythmias like ventricular tachyarrhythmias. Or even some patients, if they develop the uh, dilated uh, ventricular ventricles, then they can uh, present with the pulmonary and the system, uh, systemic embolism. But these signs and symptoms are not specific to the myocarditis. So we need to rule out other conditions before making the diagnosis of myocarditis. In most of the cases, the myocard viral myocarditis or the other cause of the myocarditis are self-limiting and the immediate prognosis is good. However, death can occur uh, in the patient because of the ventricular arrhythmias, which is the most common cause of death in these patients. Similarly, they can die of the rapidly progressive heart failure. And in some athletes during the vigorous activity, they may die because of suddenly, because again, because of the ventricular arrhythmias. And in some some forms of the myocarditis are usually low-grade myocarditis and they initially do not present with any kind of the symptoms, but in the long term, they can lead to the dilated cardiomyopathies like uh, Chagas disease, which can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy up to 10 to 20 years. So we need to take proper history about the travel to the South America or the exposure to the disease content and disease causing pathogen. So for the diagnosis of the myocarditis, we need to exclude all other causes of uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, or similar presentation like uh, acute pericarditis can present in a similar way. Similarly, myocardial infarction and other cardiac diseases can present with a similar presentation. So we need to exclude all those diagnoses before making the diagnosis of myocarditis. First investigation is ECG. ECG basically helps us to exclude all other causes of the myocarditis and the changes in the myocarditis are non-specific and we cannot accurately diagnose myocarditis only based on the ECG. So we might need to perform the echocardiography. 
In echocardiography, we can find the left ventricular dysfunction. And in some cases, we can find the focal left ventricular dysfunction due to the focal myocarditis. Or in some cases, we can also find the complication of the myocarditis like the uh, dilated chambers. As you can see in this picture, uh, there is the dilated left ventricular is largely dilated. Similarly, there is dilatation of the LA, RA and RV. So these are the features of the uh, myocarditis in echocardiography. In some cases, we might need to perform the MRI. The MRI uh, is expensive and not easily available. So it is only done in the, some selected patients. And MRI basically shows the diagnostic pattern of the myocardial inflammation or the infiltration. Uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, this is a ventricular cavity. This is myocardium. And you can see this uh, enhancement of the gadolinium in the myocardium. So this is suggestive of the inflammation of the myocardium. So MRI can show the increased tissue edema and there can be the gadolinium enhancement, particularly in the mid-wall region. So this will help us to diagnose the myocarditis. And the next investigation, if um, we want to further confirm the diagnosis is endomyocardial biopsy. In the endomyocardial biopsy, we can see the uh, lymphocytic infiltration as well as polymorphonuclear cell infiltration along with the myocyte necrosis. So in some cases, we might need to perform the endomyocardial biopsy. Similarly, in the biopsy sample, we can do the PCR test to see for any uh, genome of the any organisms that are responsible. So, however, this endomyocardial biopsy is an invasive test and is uh, not done routinely because treatment is basically supportive. And in the blur, in the initial stage of the myocarditis, there can be the increase in the troponin I, troponin T, and the creatine kinase. However, these are also non-specific signs, non-specific tests, and they can be false positive or the in case of the myocarditis. So they won't help us in the diagnosis, but they will support the diagnosis. So we may need to do this test. So once the diagnosis of the myocarditis has been made, we have to treat the patient. Treatment is basically supportive. We need to treat the patient for the cardiac failure or the arrhythmias. And if the patient have developed the dilated cardiomyopathy, we might have to treat them as the patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And other supportive treatment include the avoidance of the physical, intense physical exertion because it can induce the fatal ventricular arrhythmia that can lead to sudden death. Similarly, we should uh, we should not use glucocorticoids and immunosuppressive agents because there is no evidence of the uh, benefit in the myocarditis. In some cases, if we can find the organism and if it, if the disease is treatable, then we might need uh, we might use the antimicrobial therapy, but only in the selected patients. Similarly, if the patient doesn't improve on any heart failure medication or after the supportive treatment, then patient might require the cardiac transplantation as the definitive treatment. However, cardiac transplantation is a big surgery and the donors are not available properly and it is not done in the many centers. So, um, unless and so when the patient has to wait for the cardiac transplantation, we can um, treat the patient with the mechanical ventricular assist device like uh, we can use uh, ICDs, we can use CRT as well as we can use other uh, ventricular assist device because uh, they will help us to um, help the patient to survive till they receive the um, new heart. So thank you very much. Uh, this was about myocarditis. We'll discuss about cardiomyopathies in our next lecture.